Have you always wanted to be a kaiju monster and wreak havoc on Tokyo City? Well, you came to the right place, because tonight I'll be teaching you King of Tokyo how to play. So grab your favorite monster masks and let's get started. Now, King of Tokyo is a game where you'll take on the roles of the kaiju monsters who wreak havoc on Tokyo City. Now, the goal of the game will be to either score 20 victory points or be the last monster surviving. Now, setup is fairly simple. First, everyone will choose which monster they want to play as. They'll take the monster stand as well as the monster board. Next, they'll set the monster's health to 10 and its victory points to 0. Next, you'll take the Tokyo board and place it in the center of the table in reach of all players. Next, you'll take all of the power-up cards, shuffle them together, and deal the top three face up next to the deck. This will be the offer row of powers that you can buy later on. Next, you'll take all of the black dice and put them in the center of the table near the board. Take the two green dice and set them aside. Those will only be used with certain cards. Next, form the energy pool. Take all of the small green cubes and make a pool of them next to the game board. Now that setup is done, each player should have their monster board in front of them along with their monster stands. Now you'll need to decide who goes first. Each player will take all six black dice, roll them, and whoever has the most attacks will go first. Now attack is the ones with the hand symbol. Once this has been determined, each monster will take their turn, and then play will pass to the next monster in line. Now on your turn, you'll roll all six black dice. You can then choose to re-roll any or all of the dice two more times. Now any dice kept on the first re-roll can later be re-rolled on the second re-roll. Now after you've rolled your dice three times or chose to end early because you got exactly what you want, the symbols on the dice that you finished with will be the actions that you take that round. Now there are six different symbols on the dice. You've got ones, twos, and threes which can potentially score you victory points. You've got the lightning symbol which stands for energy. Every one of these you roll will give you an energy token. You, then you've got hearts, which will heal your monster back up from wounds they may have taken. Finally, you have the attack symbol. The attack will damage other monsters. Now, in order to score points with the numbers, you'll need to roll a set of three of them. So, if you roll three ones, three twos, or three threes, you're going to score points. Now, depending on which number you roll, you'll score a different number of points. If you roll three ones, you'll score one point, three twos, that's two points, and three threes will be three points. Now you can also score additional points for rolling extra numbers of the set that you already created. So if you roll four threes, for every three that you roll over that first three, we'll give you one additional point. Same with ones and twos. So if you roll five ones, you'll get one point for the first three, and for each additional one, you'll get one more point. So that'll be a total of three points. Now, for every lightning symbol that you get, you'll get one energy token. Now, you'll take those energy tokens from the bank, and these will last from turn to turn. So you can start hoarding a pile and use them on later turns to buy cards. Next, you have the heart symbol. For every one heart that you rolled, your monster will regain one additional hit point. Now, something to keep in mind, your monster cannot go above 10 hit points unless a specific card tells you to. One other thing to note, while you are inside Tokyo, you cannot heal any hearts. Now, certain cards will give you health back. Now, these cards can still be used inside of Tokyo. Now, for every attack symbol that you roll, that's the hand, you'll deal one damage to monsters who are not in the same place as you. So, if you are outside of Tokyo and you roll an attack symbol, you'll deal damage to monsters inside of Tokyo. If you are inside Tokyo and you roll attack damage, then you'll deal damage to all monsters outside of Tokyo. Now, both monsters inside Tokyo City and Tokyo Bay are considered to be inside Tokyo. Now, each damage results in one lost heart of the monster that you just attacked. Also, if a monster ever reaches zero hit points, then that monster is eliminated and out of the game. Now, after you've resolved your dice, you can now purchase cards if you want to. 
In order to buy the card, you'll look up in the top left corner. That is the cost of the card. You'll need to spend that many energy tokens in order to buy that card. When you buy that card, resolve its effect if it's in a discard card or put it in front of you if it's a keep card. After you buy a card, you'll immediately replace the offer row with a new card from the top of the deck. The card will either say keep or discard down at the bottom of the card. If it says keep, it's a card that you'll buy and stick in front of you and keep it for the remainder of the game, unless the card tells you to discard it at a later point. If it says discard, you'll have the effect go off immediately and then you'll discard that card. Now, you can also choose to sweep the offer row if nothing interests you. All you need to do is spend two energy, discard the entire offer row, and deal out three more cards face up, and now you can choose to buy from those new three cards that you just revealed. So, you can choose to buy a card, and then sweep the remaining, and then buy a new card, or just sweep the row and buy a card that comes up later. Finally, it is the end of your turn. Now certain cards will have effects that happen at the end of your turn, so if you have any of them, resolve their effects, and then pass all of the dice to the next player, and they will begin their turn. Now I'll discuss a little bit more about Tokyo. Now there are two locations inside the Tokyo. You have Tokyo City and Tokyo Bay. Now Tokyo Bay is only used when you have five or six players. Now, at the start of the game, Tokyo City will be unoccupied. Now the first player to roll an attack symbol will now move into Tokyo City. If you are inside Tokyo and take damage, you can choose to leave. If you want to yield Tokyo, simply remove your monster token from Tokyo City and whoever attacked you will now have to take your place. However, if you choose to stay, they simply remain outside of Tokyo and you remain inside Tokyo. Now, if your health ever drops to zero while inside Tokyo, you are eliminated and the monster who attacked you will now take your place. Now, certain cards can cause damage to players. If a monster outside Tokyo buys a card that causes the monster inside Tokyo to be eliminated, that does not count as an attack. So the monster will be removed and no one has to move inside of Tokyo. Tokyo will remain unoccupied. Now, if you are playing with five or six players, you can choose to play with the advanced rules and play with Tokyo Bay. Any monster that moves into Tokyo must first occupy Tokyo City. Any other monsters who deal damage to the monsters inside Tokyo will have to move into Tokyo Bay. If Tokyo City ever becomes unoccupied by our monster yielding or being eliminated, the monster in Tokyo Bay will immediately take over Tokyo City. Now, if a monster being eliminated brings you down to four players or less, then Tokyo Bay is off limits and players will fight over Tokyo City only. Each monster who moves inside Tokyo will score one victory point immediately. Now this counts for both Tokyo City and Tokyo Bay. Likely, whenever a monster begins their turn inside of Tokyo, they score two points immediately. Now the game is over when one monster scores either 20 victory points or is the last monster standing. Now the monster who scored 20 victory points or is the last monster standing wins the game and is crowned King of Tokyo. Now it is possible for a monster to score 20 victory points and be eliminated in the same turn. If this happens, the monster is eliminated and does not win the game. You have to survive in order to win the game. Also, it is possible for all monsters to be eliminated in the same turn. If this happens, then all monsters lose. That is everything that you need to know in order to take control of a kaiju monster and wreak havoc and eventually be crowned King of Tokyo. Now I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we'll be releasing a lot more videos like this one as well as our playthroughs and reviews. Also, if you would like to buy this game, you could find a link down in the description below. Also, we would love to hear from you. So, question of the day, what is your favorite Godzilla film? Let us know in the comment section below, as well as if there's any particular game you would like us to teach or review. Also, if you want to watch another video from Conquering Boredom, you could click the link right there. Also, when we're, our playthrough is up, you could find a link right up there. As always, remember, until next time, good luck conquering.